Hi everyone. I, my talk is not quite as technical as, as the last couple. Um, I guess I, I, uh, I just want to talk about code books. I, I, in the past, I, I have talked about um, the, way, the way that I guess I do, I do sort of consulting jobs and looked at the, wor the workflow of data analysis. But one of the first steps is often um, getting the data in, and, and often that um, you know cleaning the data is a big part of it. And I see there's a few few talks coming up later, so I'm not not really talking about that. But what a, what a, what I um, used to do was was work for the for the um, well I worked for the School of Public Health and a part of my role was a, was a statistician I might um, I might um, yeah I'll, I'll say first of all I'm from Australia so so there's a, a little plug for Australia and, and uh, this is a, this is a creek believe it or not near near my near my uh, where I come from and as as you can see it's pretty dry and so so one of the things that I really um, came to appreciate was the don't repeat yourself uh, workflow. So, so, there's, so there's the link, it's very tenuous, but it, it gives me a chance to show you some kangaroos near home. Um, and, I, and I guess what I, what I really want to want to talk about is, is just code books, uh, just in, the, in this particular session. And I, I'll mention at the end that I, that I do like, like the idea of, of uh, using, using a sort of uh, overall strategy of, of using make and git uh, to, to sort of manage my projects because because often they're fairly large and and they can take a lot they can work sort of happen over a number of years even so some of the some of the projects that I've worked on uh, and but but today I'll just talk about um, I'll just talk about um, the the code book aspect of the code book aspect of this okay so I better not uh, carry on too much I've already mentioned the sort of things that I do. So, so I guess in, in medical statistics especially, um, and in epidemiological projects, often people come and see a statistician and, they, and they've got a big data set. And often it's, if, if they've had good training, it's well documented. But it might just, it might just be um, well documented in the sense of having a photocopy of some old code book, or it might be, um, if, if you're very lucky, someone that's a bit more uh, nuanced in, in data analysis and they'll, they'll have their code book in a spreadsheet so you can actually ac access the data and you don't have to, don't have to type it in because any sort of manual intervention will, will uh, undoubtedly sort of cause problems and, and also, um, and also cause, cause errors. I mean the sort of double handling or triple handling of things is not very good. So, so it's an important, the code book is an important step in designing a data analysis project and it defines things like vari variable names, labels that you might use in plots, um, category labels, so we call them factor labels in R, um, and uh, including missing ones, and, and we need to handle our missing data. Um, limits if we've got continuous, so we might be, we might want to want to find values that are out of range, that, so we need to do something with those. It'll, it'll specify other things like date formats, and there'll be all sorts of other, other things that we can include in our code book, uh, including things that we don't really use in the analysis, but, but useful information. And certainly um, places like um, libraries, a lot, lot of libraries around the world, especially that are involved with medical, uh, well, every, um, I think most universities have a medical or health, health um, faculty, but, but there's a lot of libraries uh, that, that tend to um, that tend to look at data management these days, and so so you can find lots of uh, information about about code books there. Um, and I guess my interest really is that in the past I've had many uh, projects running at the same time, and I get new projects all the time. So I might work on a hundred projects in a year, and I don't really want to have to repeat myself over and over. What I'd rather do is is uh, have some sort of automated um, uh, way of working with this sort of data. And so I guess uh, often people come to me with code books, and so they've been taught to, taught to do this stuff, uh, and they're often quite similar, even though they're not all the same. And, uh, and uh, I guess what I aim to do is to use that, to use that uh, metadata to, to sort of set up the data so that, I, so that I can use it in an analysis. And I guess there's all sorts of, um, I realize that there's a lot of stuff out there, um, and to, to order, so, sort of automate the, these types of things. And there's, I just discovered a few days ago that the sort of, um, the, the top two, the Excel code book to, to SAS code and, and the RegCap generated R code, are basically just churn out a whole lot of, uh, the top case SAS, but the, 
the red cap ge just generates our code, which is pretty ugly, but it's automatically generated, and that will set up the data for you. And I guess what, what, what I come across inste instead of that is, is um, we can read in the data, so we're, we all know how to do this in R, but, but the code book is a separate issue that, that I want to sort of match up, if you like, with the, with the data that, I, that I'm looking at. And um, so the code book might look something like this. You've got some variable names, you've got labels, you've got factor levels if they're there, um, and you may have some sort of limits, and they may be specified in different ways. Uh, and, and I guess we can all, um, we can all uh, write code to, to read this in, but I guess the, the, the old maxim, that, um, I think Hadley Wickham said it, but if you, use it, if you do it more than three times, you should write a function. So, so that's what I've done. Uh, so it's not it's not rocket science, um, and and there's there's the data that sort of matches up with the code book. So so it's um, so we're all familiar with that. And often uh, working with Medicos, the data is often in Excel. If you're lucky, it's in a it's in a database. Um, and I guess um, just for for uh, reading the code book. So so this is still an early stage of development. Um, we can just put, specify the file name, the, the column names, um, and and we can put in other details, so and and missing values and so on. So I've sort of used Redar to to um, to read this in, and the, the nice thing about that is that it, that instead of um, sort of the old the, the more base way of of uh, automatically creating factors, you end up with text, and so that's great if you if you're not in a hurry and you want to then make the factors yourself, but if you've already got all this information in the code book, why not use that to make the factors, check that the, the levels are there and, and so on, uh, or ch check to see what's missing or what, what shouldn't be there um, that doesn't sort of match up with the code book. So, um, and the, this, uh, the, the, the um, once you read a code book in, then it's just a, just create an S3 object and these, and these are sort of the, the components of that. So things like the, the things that we've already looked at, variable names and labels, factor names, levels, and so on. And so, and so then it's a simple matter just to, just to manipulate those and sort of check, check, uh, check values that are out of range and, uh, and all that sort of thing. So, so I guess um, I won't really say, say too much about that, but they, these are the sorts of things that can be in, a, in, a, in the code book. And on the, on the left-hand side is... is um, the, the, the sort of names in, in the um, S3 object, and then the, and this is uh, the value might be in the file. So we can spe just specify what those what those um, um, values are, and if they're, if they're sort of missing, we don't need to uh, need to worry about them. So um, once again, we're reading in the CSV with Redar uh, and and using the the tidyverse sort of approach, and. Uh, we just get some data in, but we'll see that, that things like sex, which would normally come in um, as a factor, has come in as a character. So, so, um, so from that, we might want to create factors. So, so um, there's a, a function called create factors, or it's obvious what it does, and um, we basically give it the, d the data set that we just, just read in a, as, a, as a tibble, and then the, the, the code book as an S3 object and that will create the factors for us, and it will so also check the levels. So, so this is uh, sort of basic stuff, but it, but it's something that we do all the time, and so and so it's useful to automate this in this way. And so we'll see here that that, that w if we create a new d uh, data s data set um, called my data, then basically um, it goes through. It sees there's three factors, uses the levels, and and then just creates. Um, the factors. So we'll see now that, the, that in the new the, uh, object or the new tibble that, that the, the um, I me, mean, I shouldn't really probably touch that, who knows what'll happen. But um, the, the factor, we see that we now got factors instead of text variables. So, so I mean, it, it's, um, it's pretty straightforward, but what happens, say, if we have the, r the wrong level? So, so we might have, a, we might have a, um, you know, you, you can often get M's and F's and zeros and ones and Lower and upper case. Well, here we've just got one one case where one of the, one of the um, um, one of the values is is f for female. Uh, sorry, l the lower f instead of the capital F. And so, um, because R is case sensitive, then then we want to know about that. We can go back and fix that. And so and so, it's uh, it it lets us know. 
And so we can either fix it in R or go back to the, the data. I don't like going back to and touching data myself because I prefer always to have the original. And, and, and by, by doing it in R, we can document, you know, have an audit trail. So the, sa the same sort of thing with con continuous variables. Um, we can also um, re read in, uh, uh, say, a, a different data set. And then uh, we'll see that we've got some continuous variables here, doubles and integers. And um, we can then uh, validate the limits on, on these uh, using the, using the, um, the code book, uh, the information in the code book there. And, uh, and I guess um, that's fairly, fairly straightforward. And, and so we'll see that there is just one value out of range. As I say, this is sort of a, a early days and I'd be keen to get any feedback. I know that there's other, I know that there's other, um, I know that there's other things out there, and so, so I don't know. Um, I, I've looked, but I can't find uh, too much in, in sort of working the way that I that I sort of want to do it. And I'm very keen to to find out. Um, and I guess um, I guess the developments that I that I do plan to do is to sort of uh, read a wider range of codebook formats. Often. Um, we sort of, in epidemiology anyway, we, we look at secondary or, 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 or uh, we don't look at primary data, we look at secondary and tertiary data and often uh, some of these code books on the web might have, you know, 2,800 2, variables and they're all HTML. You, you, can, you, can, uh, you can scrape the web to get all the information but, but it's not in a fully, in a standard sort of format that I'm used to for, for smaller sort of Early phase sort of studies where, where you've got um, where you've got Excel spreadsheets normally as the, the as the best sort of form of, of code book. So so I'd like to expand it up, and I and I understand that in in areas like environmental science and and uh, social science. I saw a poster last night, but I didn't catch the the author. But um, the, that there's XML sort of formats for fairly standard stuff. I mean, in early phase trials, you don't really have that. So this is what I'm sort of more aiming at. But it would be good to be able to cover those types of those types of situations. Uh, and obviously, I want to provide better error checking and better output, um, and and even look at outlier options rather than rather than just looking at fixed fixed limits. And and certainly, um, you can imagine that we could do things like store away syntax. Often, there's a whole lot of created variables, so we might have height and weight, the classic one. And we do BMI, and so we might want to store it away. So we might want to do that. And uh, I'll finish pretty quickly, Jonathan. Thanks. And uh, so I guess my my suggested data analysis workflow is is the code book is just the first step. I, I like to automate those things. I often use make uh, and and put put the data, the the syntax, and the and the make files in a, in a Git repo, and then I can then I can reproduce what I'm doing. As I say, the, the code book is the first first step. It's an early stage of development, and I'm quite uh, quite keen to hear f f from anyone that's already done something similar or or uh, has got any ideas. So thanks very much. I'll leave it there. Uh, we do have time for a question or two for Peter. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so that's a that's an interesting English question, <laughs> but it's it's called a co it's called a code book because of the way you're coding up your data. I think so. So a lot of these things, a lot of the stuff I come across, uh, say a, say a, a trial that's been going for 30 years, um, they they only used four characters for their variable names, and even if it's sex, they don't use sex. They use something like ra23 or something. Um, Uh, yes, yes. Often measurement units, yeah. Yep, yep. Thank you. Yeah, no, I enjoyed your, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed your tutorial. <laughs> if there's no further questions, we'll thank Peter again.